uh, uh, have uh, Mr. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our first couple of questions will be for Mr. Mr. Moore here. Uh, Mr. Moore, the University of Pennsylvania, you know where this is going, which runs the Penn Biden Center in Washington, D.C., reportedly received 14 million from unnamed contributors in China and Hong Kong and 2.4 million from unnamed contributors in Saudi Arabia. There's another country, Saudi Arabia, since 2021. Uh, these, the names of these donors are concealed by Department of Education, which is required to report donations to universities that it funds with federal dollars, uh, but the agency re uh, has reportedly declined a request to provide the names. Uh, Mr. Moore, according to these reports, again with the Penn Biden Center having received millions of dollars from unnamed foreign influence, should the American public be concerned about that? Thank you, Congressman. I think the, the American public should be very concerned about the uh, undisclosed donor identities to uh, UPenn, particularly leading up to the presidential election in 2020. Uh, it was after the establishment of the Biden Center that uh, there was a very dramatic increase. I think Gibson, reportable Gibson contracts were up 389% between 2018 and 19. Uh, meanwhile, I think nine admi current administration officials were on the payroll of the, of the UPenn Biden Center. Uh, UPenn is, is uh, but the, this goes, in my opinion, to the, to the question of, of requiring that donor identities be made available uh, as part of disclosure. Disclosure is somewhat meaningless uh, if the donor identities aren't provided so that the American people and uh, policymakers can, can know who's, who's giving what to whom. And, uh, and UPenn is not alone. There are many other universities with, with uh, similar uh, patterns uh, where it appears that there's an attempt to influence policymakers. Uh, but this was a rather startling one with UPenn, and that's why I think that, that donor identity should be disclosed. Yeah, and just one, just one of the offices where classified documents have been found that belong to Mr. Biden, by the way. Uh, Mr. Singleton, uh, the reports are that $6.5 billion uh, in previously unreported foreign money has went to universities from adversarial countries, $6.5 billion. Uh, $8.4 billion in anonymously reported foreign money over the last decade. 800 billion is the total endowment of these, uh, of the market value of the endowment of United States institutions of higher learning, by the way. 807 billion is the endowment. And yet we've got 1.6 trillion outstanding student loans with exorbitant increase in college tuition. Uh, in your testimony, you mentioned how university endowments are uh, increasingly under foreign influence. Could you speak to that a little more, elaborate on that, please? Absolutely. Uh, currently, there are no restrictions whatsoever on U.S. university endowments from investing in uh, Chinese companies uh, that are directly involved in Chinese military civil fusion. Um, there are numerous uh, examples of endowment funds being injected and capitalized into Chinese companies that are directly involved in developing advanced technologies that are used uh, to propagate the Uyghur genocide, for example. Mm -hmm. And there's very little insight and accountability into how uh, these endowment funds are being managed, uh, what's their exposure to China, and certainly um, what linkages and dependencies are created as a result of those endowment relationships that do create undue burdens and adversarial pressure, not just on the endowment funds themselves, but the universities. Why do you think that universities with the largest endowments tend to be the worst offenders with complying with Section 117, the reporting of the foreign donations? Well, I would say that you know the key right is updating and expanding mandatory reporting requirements because it will simply conform with the realities that foreign influence plays on the university system, including endowments. Universities run the risk of entanglement with the Chinese Communist Party in large part because they rely on these opaque funding and endowment systems um, from party-connected sources. That includes gifts, donations, investments, Confucius Institutes, and research partnerships. Uh, staying with you, Mr. Singleton, in one of his first national security-related acts, President Biden, a uh, year and a half ago, withdrew, or two and a half years ago, I should say, withdrew a Trump-era rule requiring universities to disclose their terms of agreement with Confucius Institutes, which, of course, act as Chinese Communist Party outposts on college campuses. Why do you think that he would do that? I'm not sure. I mean, you I think, think of any good reason to do that? 
I'm not sure. I, th I think it's it's worthy of pursuit in terms of investigation and hearing, simply because we know that Confucius Institutes operate as outposts for China's United Front Work Department, which plays a key role in its political warfare. They've also, there are numerous examples of Confucius Institutes and their follow-on successors, sometimes referred to as Confucius classrooms, being harnessed uh, to intimidate Asian American students uh, studying here in the United States, um, to control curricula that are used uh, and propagated on U.S. college campuses, and to control uh, research initiatives uh, that are developed as a result of these funds. So I think that while the number of Confucius Institutes has dropped precipitously from 113 to about 10 today, the problem is that we've seen this pr uh, proliferation of Confucius Institute-like agreements. And frankly, uh, no one has been able to sort of understand the scale and scope of that problem because there's no information. Mr. Singleton, my time's run out. I'm getting tapped out here. So thank you for your time. Appreciate you being here today. I yield back, Mr. Chairman.